what's up guys welcome back for another video it's a no face video today i wanted to bring this to you pretty quickly if i could so we all know that the crypto market has been crashing if we take a look at coin market cap here look at the past seven days past 24 hours we are a lot of them in double digits down some of them up look at this solana's up over the past seven days 71 percent, which is crazy congratulations to those solana owners and then i think we have another one that is up pretty majorly look even swaps down 23 percent polka dots down algorand is up over the past 24 hours 39 percent. congratulations if you're holding that but most of the major ones are down over the past you know seven days or so bitcoin is down to 46,000 it did hit over 50,000 so that's not that great but I'm not too worried about it I don't think it's a it's the end of anything really you know we do have uh several other ones like let's see down here uh Ethereum Classics down 12.45 percent most of the whole overall crypto market is down Filecoin is not down though <laughs> the main competitor to BTT as you know and we're going to take a look at some resistance and support lines some technical analysis i drew for you in a little bit and i'm going to show you why we really haven't hit overall major support lines okay we haven't crossed them should i say we may have bounced off of them but we are not definitely uh, not not too worried about it and you can definitely see the difference over the past few days look at this we're at a 47 neutral on the fear and greed index Yesterday we were at a 79. Last week we're at a 71. Now we're at a 47. Okay, it's very neutral. Remember, if you guys watched uh, my previous videos, I think it was the previous uh, Ethereum Classic video, I talked about once the needle starts getting closer to here, it starts getting more to greed, more to overbought, and we will see a pullback. But one of the main reasons why it pulled back is kind of like a you know buy the rumors, sell the news, like we've seen with Dogecoin on Saturday Night Live. Like we see constantly in the stock market when it comes to earning reports, you know, news is built in to the, you know, the, the numbers of a lot of these coins and a lot of these stocks. But right, you know, right now we're talking about right now we're talking about the crypto market. So that's what we have going on. As you guys know, El Salvador is now using uh, crypto as its legal tender. OK, and we'll take a look at uh, a few articles here talking about, you know, what's going on. Market wrap, right? Bitcoin plummets as El Salvador buys the dip because Bitcoin tumbles below 46,000 triggers billions in long term position liquidations. OK, you can see this. They got a nice little chart for us here. So it was around 52,000. Boom. Hard spike down here and then we pop back up. That's okay. Bitcoin was sharply lower on Tuesday at one point, declining nearly 19% from 52,000 resistance level. The drop occurred after El Salvador bought 200 Bitcoins on Monday ahead of the Central American nation's Bitcoin law going into effect. Under the law, Bitcoin is now accepted as legal tender. Okay, so you might say, well, what? why is it dropping? That's a good thing. Again, like I just said, people buy the rumor, sell the news. It's like an overhyped thing, basically. They just bought 200 Bitcoins that should have shot it up, right, in a sense. But no, that's not necessarily how it works, right? We see these numbers built into the price. And once you get closer to the news date, it drops down. The short BTC decline triggered about $3 billion of trading, triggered about $3 billion of trading position liquidations with about $1 billion of selling around 10 a.m. Eastern time. Bitcoin was trading around 47,000 at the press time and is down 10% over the past 24 hours. And this was actually released on the 27th. So with this being said, like I said, it should have, you know, triggered it to shoot up. But again, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news situation what we have going on here. Let's take a look at this. Bitcoin trades week after Tuesday's leverage washout. Analysts see more price volatility ahead. After a big decline in leverage washout, traders tend to be less confident and more risk averse. Bitcoin remains on offer as market sediment remains weak in the wake of Tuesday's leverage driven price slide. Dour mood in equity markets and negative crypto news flow. The cryptocurrency is currently trading at around $45,300 representing a 3% drop on the day. Price fell by 11% on Tuesday and reached as low as $40,000 on some exchanges. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. Reportedly due to the uh, forced closure of long positions in the, in the derivatives market 
and liquidity shortage caused by exchange downturns in market makers going offline. So basically saying it was a forced close position after a big decline in leverage washout. Remember, if you're working with leverage, sometimes you have to pay that back. It's pretty much what happened in the, the you know, this upper portion of this article here. That's what they're saying. Anyway, after a big decline in leverage washout, traders tend to be less confident and more risk averse for some time. That often results in flat to negative market action we see at press time. So basically, right, we have a lot of people using leverage. Okay, when you borrow leverage and you're, you're when you borrow money and you're using leverage, you have to pay that money back whenever they ask for it. Okay, it's kind of like running on margin. That people are buying the news and uh, buying the rumor and selling the news, and basically, you know, FOMO sets in, or FUD, should I say, not FOMO, uh, FUD. So people start selling, they see it going down. You know, 11% a day isn't nothing to wink at, isn't nothing to to blink at, right? That could scare a lot of paper hands off if they're not hodling for the long term, okay? But I'm not worried about that, guys. I am currently buying the dip on really whatever position that I want to get ahead on. I'm First of all, I'm dollar cost averaging into the main cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic. And I'm also buying the dip in them. And I'm also buying the dip in these smaller altcoins like BTT and uh, Digibyte and things like that. So let's take a look at my uh, some of the technical analysis that I, I drew up for you guys. So, so as we can see on the four hour chart, this is more of a strong support level. This is more of the lighter support level. And as you can see, we already sunk more below the lighter, su lighter support level. Why well, I say lighter? Because we hit it here, hit it here. We struck it three times before, before it actually broke through. And we are finally below the 200 day moving average, but I'm not necessarily worried about being below the 200 day moving average. Once we actually get below this thicker resistance line down here, that's when I will start to worry. Once we get below this and maintain below this, this is really the iffy area. Once we get above this line, above the $46,000 mark, that's when I think we will be able to uh, really, really see more of an uptrend and pop possibly get back above that 200 day moving average. But again, guys, you know, I'm not necessarily worried because we aren't breaking major support lines yet should i say we might have hit you know a small spike here but it went back up pretty quickly same thing with ethereum if you look at ethereum it's showing the same way right we have a bottom here 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 it hit it three times close to four times before it actually broke through this broke through a little bit down here oh if this breaks through this then we have a problem right it's going to go down we are actually still above our 200 day moving average which is pretty good i definitely think right now ethereum is stronger in essence than bitcoin looking at ethereum classic same thing we have our lighter one here that we drew from way back here it broke through here tapped here tapped here and then it broke down through here again so we are below our 200 day moving average and we did break below this main support line here a little bit we're back above it and we're actually back above our not so main support line here looking at btt we kind of have the same movement going on here we are actually below our you know 200 day moving average this is our bigger support line our main support line in my eyes you know closer to the three cent mark or 2.0028 cents and this is our medium support line here right we broke below it but now we're back above it we, we hit it here we broke below it here we tapped it here now we're here with it and we're up above it after we hit it okay i do believe we can bounce back above it once all the dust clears and all the dust settles but that's only a matter of time guys before it does do that like i said i'm constantly buying the dip hope you guys are too and that's all i have for you today if you enjoyed this video smash that thumbs up button for the youtube algorithm and let me know in the comments below if you like these little presentation videos i give you you know the no face video is pretty quick news or whatever it's actually a lot easier for me to do than shoot a video uh with the camera on it's, it's a lot more setup a lot more prep work Jeff, like this video don't forget to subscribe go ahead and get you some free bitcoin from that link in the top pinned comment guys if you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me go ahead and click one of the videos on the screen i'm gonna get out of here peace love and prosperity